Hello, I'm Michael Trusiak, and welcome to Community College News. Today we will look at Canada's outdated copyright laws and working out at home versus working out at the gym. We sweat out the details, but first, snow and ice not only causes problems on the road, but also at home. Tony Bourgeois finds out how much damage homeowners could see during the winter season. Ice and snow buildup on shingled rooftops can cause damage and leaks in people's homes. Blake Price owns and operates a construction company. He says repairs can cost as much as $15,000. Basically what snow and ice can do to the roof is the freezing and thawing effect of the snow. It causes expansion and contraction on the shingles or steel, whichever shingles mostly. And what happens, it creates cracks in the shingles. Price says water from melting ice can leak into the walls and ruin insulation or cause mold. He says people with tin rooftops may also have a more dangerous problem. And the ice come off a steel roof. And it come down onto a lower roof and then it come out and down on the hood of my truck. And it banged, it actually cracked the windshield and banged the hood and things down in on it. But it cost him around $2,000 worth of damage or better. One Woodstock homeowner says he's been clearing his own roof each year to avoid problems. Uh, I clean it off myself. I get on the roof of the ladder, my scoop, I take all mine up because I just got a bungalow. Price says if your roof does need to be cleaned, be careful not to actually chip away at the ice on top. Doing so might actually end up damaging your shingles. Price also says that if you do need to get your roof cleaned off, don't take a risk. If it seems too steep, hire a professional. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. Accidents and poor driving conditions that lead to them are a harsh reality of winter. As Ethan Hazlitt reports, what you decide to do after a crash can have an impact on your driving record. Spinning wheels, frosty windows, and cars off the road. Accidents are most common in the winter months, according to the insurance information company, Kinetics. When they do happen, you might find yourself talking to someone like Wendy Smith. The first thing they should do is call the police. She's been in the insurance field for over 35 years and believes in being careful. She thinks that you can never be too safe. Say you run into the back end of somebody, there's no damage, and the guy says, oh, you're fine, you know, there's no damage, we're good, and you drive away, two months later they might decide they have whiplash. Transport Canada says the number of car accidents has been declining since 1990. The insurance hotline has six basic tips for people involved in a crash. First, don't admit you're at fault. Don't argue with the other driver. Simply wait for the police. And don't leave your car in the middle of the road. If possible, drive it to the side. Don't be pressured by the tow truck driver to immediately remove your car. Don't authorize major repairs until you've spoken to your insurance company. And finally, don't accept a direct payment from the other driver. Some try to avoid the risk of paying higher insurance premiums by not reporting the crash. But David Harris says the temptation to not call their insurance company or the police is a bad idea. Every time I have an accident, I call my insurance company. Just in case something happens in the fu uh, you know, like in the future, it's on record. If you do call in an accident, you don't necessarily have to put in a claim. Smith says people often call them in just so they're on file, but do the small repairs themselves to save the hassle and cost of higher insurance. In Woodstock, Ethan Hazlitt, Community College News. A new bill under consideration in Parliament aims to bring Canada's copyright laws into the 21st century. But the wording of the bill could spell trouble for students, researchers, and educators. Jeff Stairs has more. Part of the government's Bill C-11 is intended to protect the rights of those who create and distribute digital content. Opponents of the bill say traditional fair use of copyrighted material is permitted under the new bill, but accessing that material is another story. Internet law professor Michael Geist has openly criticized the bill's wording. He fears the rights of the copyright holder will outweigh the rights of the public. So we've got you know, serious problems where once you map the legal language onto the technical reality, uh, Canadians simply find themselves locked out. Geis says the bill outlaws breaking digital copyright protection, known as digital locks, even if the intended use of the protected content is legal. Let's say a teacher wants to use a clip from a documentary in a class presentation. Even though using the clip for that purpose is completely legal, if the teacher breaks the digital lock to access it, they've broken the law. 
Greg Campbell is a researcher at the L.P. Fisher Library in Woodstock. He says free access to all types of media is essential to his work. It's vital. Without it, a lot of things, a lot of questions I couldn't answer. Um, I would know they're there, but be like having my, my hands tied. The government has stated it hopes to vote on the bill as early as April. But as debate on C-11 continues in the House of Commons, there may still be changes to come. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. The federal government continues to search for ways to protect the budget. Currently, they are looking to reform Canada's old age security. Kyle Dupont has more. Prime Minister Stephen Harper announced his intentions to reform old age security at the World Economic Forum in Switzerland. There is speculation that changes may include moving the retirement age to 67 from 65. Investment planner Kent Wilson understands this move. So the government really needs people to work longer so that the government will have, in my opinion, um, will have the money longer uh, to, to grow it. The volume of people expected to come into retirement in the near future is growing. According to the Conservatives, the OAS is likely going to cost the government three times more within 20 years. A lot of those people now are you know, reaching that 50, 55, 65 and are on retirement and uh, um, they want people to work longer. There's a lot, of, a lot of money being paid out. No specific details have been made public yet by the Harper government. It is stressing that there is no concern for those who currently receive OAS or those who are close to retirement as the financial problem will likely escalate to a peak within the next 20 years. But as baby boomers start to retire and there is a shrinking workforce, it will be unlikely that they will be able to afford future pensions. In the coming years, as more and more people are starting to retire because the baby boomers have started to reach retirement age, that it's going to be more of a complication in the next five or 10 or 15 years than it will be by the time I reach that age. For now, all people can do is wait for an end to speculation and get some real hard facts. That will come when the government releases their budget in March. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. Landlords in the province think the government should give them a major tax break. A break they said would be passed on to tenants. Over 250,000 people in New Brunswick live in apartments and pay some of the highest tax rates in the province. Landlords like Anna Andow says it is because that apartment owners in New Brunswick are charged a provincial property tax rate on top of the local property tax. Because you, you have to pass it on to your tenants and that's not good and uh, uh, also New Brunswick is the only place in Canada that has that double taxation on, uh, on apartments and so forth. Apartments in the province are classified as non-occupied owner properties and are subsequently charged a provincial rate of $1.45 per every $100 of assessed property. In Nova Scotia, apartments fall under the same category as owner-occupied properties. The provincial property tax affects housing developers as well. Organizations like the New Brunswick Real Estate Association believe double taxation is hurting the housing market. Developers must pay non-ownerified tax rates on land as soon as it's service. In the action plan for new governance, Premier Allward said that they will bring greater fairness and transparency to property taxation and assessment. The government has listed double taxation as one of the issues that will be addressed in the upcoming spring budget. It is that time of year when many of us are thinking about shedding the extra pounds gained from the holidays. Martin Poirier looks into working out at home or joining a fitness center. You've just planned a trip to a sunny destination or decided this will be the year to get fit. Many options are available when it's time to get into shape. Long work hours, family and commutes make it hard to get to a gym. Working out at home is ideal for some people. You know, if you've got to travel to the gym, you've got to get yourself in there and get ready, you know, it's a long commitment to work out at the gym. Working out at home requires little or no equipment. A few dumbbells, aerobic steps, and workout videos are versatile and affordable. Stores that specialize in home exercise equipment sell multi-station machines, treadmills, and other equipment that can run a few hundred dollars to thousands. Working out alone is not for everyone. 
experts say group workouts produce better results. Motivated to make yourself do the work workout. Uh, coming to a boot camp class, you have someone actually telling you what to do and when to do it, and there's no stopping you. Here, you come, you put your 30, 35 minutes in, you're done. Uh, training at home, I find that uh, it's very hard to get motivated. Uh, it's very easy to put off. Professional instruction may help prevent injury. A trainer can tell you if you are performing an exercise correctly. If you're doing a certain exercise and it kind of hurts your shoulders and you just keep going at it because you think that's the only thing you can do for that specific muscle, you might not get the results you want. Fitness centers offer a variety of options like multiple workstations and exercise programs. Workouts can be completed in 45 minutes or less. Monthly membership fees can make it more affordable. Whether you're hanging upside down or running into place, or rolling yourself into shape. There's no better time to be active and have fun. In Moncton, Martin Fourier, Community College News. Looking good there, Martin. That's our show for today. To send us an idea, email us at jschoolnbcc at gmail.com or visit more of our work at jschoolnbcc.ca. Thanks for watching. Bye.